This video will explain the conditions of the fuel retained in the reactors of Units 1 through 3 at Fukushima Daiichi Nuclear Power Station and TEPCO's measures to prevent recriticality, the return to a point at which a nuclear reaction becomes self-sustaining in the fuel debris there. Also, to address the following, the possibility of recriticality occurring from the fuel debris, what would happen if recriticality occurs and what TEPCO would do if recriticality occurred. Let's explain the condition of the fuel at the moment. Currently, the fuel inside units 1 through 3 has melted down, cooled, and solidified with the surrounding materials. Its condition is termed fuel debris. It is highly possible that the fuel debris has reached not only the reactor pressure vessels, or RPVs, but also the bottom of the primary containment vessels, or PCVs. The stability of the temperatures inside the RPVs and PCVs has been constantly monitored to ensure that the remaining heat from the fuel debris continues to be cooled. Is there any possibility of recriticality occurring from the current fuel debris? First of all, criticality is defined as a condition where a nuclear fission reaction becomes self-sustaining. To cause criticality, special conditions are necessary, such as placing the fuel in a position where criticality is likely to occur and maintaining a suitable amount of water surrounding it. These conditions are not easily achieved. For nuclear power generation, certain stable conditions are created which make criticality likely to occur based on thorough calculations. The heat energy obtained from criticality generates steam, which then turns turbines to generate electricity. Currently, the melted fuel has changed shape, being mixed with the surrounding materials. The balance with the water has also been disrupted, and therefore, the current conditions are far from those where criticality is likely to occur. The possibility of criticality occurring cannot be discounted completely if a series of coincidences happens at the same time. However, the chance that criticality will occur again in Units 1 through 3 is extremely small. To deal with any event of criticality occurring, a new system was installed which monitors the situation constantly and can detect the radioactive materials which would be generated. We will continue to confirm that no criticality is occurring in Units 1 through 3. What would happen if recriticality occurs? The external impacts of recriticality have been simulated. The radiation generated from recriticality cannot pass through the concrete walls surrounding the reactor. The heat energy that would be generated from recriticality has been determined to be less than one ten thousandth of the energy used to rotate the turbines in normal operation. The external impact should be extremely small, even if radioactive gas generated from recriticality were to leak outside of the power station. Can recriticality be stopped if it occurs? Boron can suppress the chain reaction of nuclear fission by absorbing the neutrons. Therefore, boric acid solution tanks were installed at Fukushima Daiichi Nuclear Power Station to enable a response to recriticality at any time. In the event of station blackout during an earthquake, fire engines can also inject boric acid solutions into the reactors. As has been demonstrated in this video, the possibility of recriticality occurring at Fukushima Daiichi Nuclear Power Station is extremely low, and even if it does happen, the scale should be very small. The power station is also prepared to suppress recriticality. Therefore, even if recriticality were to occur, the chances of the fuel debris inside the reactors melting through the reactor buildings and seeping underground are extremely low. Explosions from recriticality are also highly unlikely to happen. TEPCO Holdings will continue to provide information to ease public anxiety and respond to any questions.